I'm fortunate enough to have Henry Kaminsky Jr. join us today. He is his own brand consultant. He's a professional. He's been working for a number of years. You guys can look him up. How do you choose good clients and do you have a system for choosing those good clients? Self-awareness would be a great characteristic to have, knowing your strengths, knowing your weaknesses, the willingness to be coachable. I think having a sense of coachability, it would be a, a characteristic of a great client. Having some sort of direction, having some sort of homework done up front um, could be helpful to us as creatives, sort of having some sort of direction, really having a clear understanding of what is that you want out of the project. Don't take it so serious. Is, is I think a lot of people get tied up in the seriousness of it and they forget that this is, this is fun. This should be fun for you as the business owner or the person asking for the work to be rendered. Mm -hmm. And it should be fun for the designer to actually take on a project that's going to like get those juices flowing. Mm -hmm. One thing that I want to work with in terms of clients is people who really value their time. People who have too much free time are problematic clients for us. When they don't value their time, they're bored, and they're looking to do something with you. And so a call that should take 10 minutes will last two hours. A simple review turns into a lengthy discussion. Mm -hmm. I don't want to work with that person. I'm looking for people who are risk tolerant who are willing to make a bold and big decision and make a calculated risk, that they're not always looking for the most conservative, the safest path forward. And I even tell clients that up front. If you're looking for the safe choice, we are not the safe choice. And yeah. for sure, it's important for us to share common values and beliefs. I don't want to work with people who want to destroy the world, who are only in it for themselves because then I'm furthering their mission, allowing them to continue to think this way. Yeah. Now, I wanna say that, that that's the, a luxury of a person who has the ability to make choices, and sometimes some people can't make those choices, and I'm not judging you. To wish that your client were better communicators yeah. says that I'm not going to develop the skills to be a better communicator. You should aspire to be the better communicator to help them bring Well, up. that's why they're hiring you. Well, I think so. In every relationship, think about this. I don't know that much about cars. Imagine if I had to go to an auto mechanic and tell them precisely what was wrong. Well, you know, the other day, uh, the spark plugs misfired and I, I, I think the, the timing belt is off and I can hear this and diagnose that. And by the way, the electronics in this is not working properly. That should probably cost $2,400, right? Is that what we're looking for? Mm. That's unrealistic, don't you think? So when a client comes to you, they probably don't know what it is that they need to know. And that's okay. They just have to be open enough to have a conversation with you and to be smart enough to recognize, yeah, that sounds true. This is what I mean by beginning to take that journey towards being a strategist or a consultant or just being a better listener to problems. Not to assume that everything that comes out of a client's mouth is true. To not to wish for them to come in and know all these answers ahead of time. Actually, the more that I'm able to reveal to a client that they don't know, the more valuable I become.